Hello friends. This video is essentially uh, a way for me to say goodbye to my friend, to our friend John Harden, uh, Matches860, and to briefly try to celebrate his memory and to urge everyone out there in the community to to keep that memory alive, because that's what John would have wanted. So, I have here tonight, um, of course, Haunted Bookshop. And I have my answer to the Friday 7LE. This is a 7LE622. Uh, I've always preferred this shape. Uh, it's a, more of a pot. But this was my... Friday 7 Ellie, which was largely uh, John's influence. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see that this pipe actually is broken. There's a, a split in the stem right about here. I dropped it a few weeks ago and cracked the stem, and I need to make a new stem for it. I haven't gotten around to it. Uh, but this is the pipe that I need to smoke for John. <laughs> uh, it's just Every time I've ever smoked this pipe, I've thought of him, and this time will be no different. So I've glued it. I do not know if it'll last. Uh, I've got the Bing's favorite here in, in, as a backup. But we're going to try to smoke this one. And I've also got the official drink of Matches 860, some ginger ale. But I apologize, John. I had to fortify mine a bit to get through this. And to be honest, this isn't the first one I've had. It's very hard when someone dies suddenly. You know, they, they, they leave a hole. There's so many unanswered questions and things that should have been said, things that things that you wish you had said, things that you wish you had asked. Uh, so many answers, questions that will never be answered. And that's always, always difficult. But with someone like John, who was friend to so many, um, you know, the outpouring of emotion and, and, and well, basically love over the past several days has been uh, amazing and at the same time very difficult for me um, I've talked to a few of you about the the mixed emotions that I've had over the past several days um, you know I, I chalk some of that up to just shock and uh, not knowing how to respond I had to take some time off I had to, to think through this and really think about what I wanted to say before I, I sat down to, to make this video. So let me see if I can pack a pipe and light up for John. And by the way, the other on a personal note, I, I've been sick. I, cold came back and I, I have not had a pipe in over a week so this is going to be the first pipe I've had in, in quite a long time by my standards, and uh, I'm really glad that it can be a pipe for John. So let's light this up, and hopefully this stem will hold together. Uh, my Zippo. Oh, there's just nothing quite like Haunted Bookshop. And you know, John and I met both smoking Haunted Bookshop, uh, and we talked about it a few times.
you know, he he knew uh, or had, had had the opportunity to meet and talk to Bob Ranowski, who was the blender of Haunted Bookshop, and I had the opportunity to uh, speak to Craig Totter, who actually introduced me to Haunted Bookshop, who was, of course, the founder of Cornell and Deal. And we always talked about someday getting together to compare notes on those two guys, and sadly it never happened. But uh, I think I might be one of the few people that smokes Haunted Bookshop, that smoked Haunted Bookshop before knowing John, uh, because John has been such a force for <laughs> spreading the love of Haunted Bookshop. And I wanted to talk a bit today about how I, how I met John, how I, you know, and, and we're using, how do you talk about meeting someone that you've never actually physically met? You know, it, it, it's a very weird world we live in here on YouTube. But I did meet him. And he doesn't know the story of how I met him. He never heard the story. But I want to share it with you. So, I guess it had to be six or seven years ago now. I was... Uh, I was very active in online in um, fly tying forums, uh, fly fishing forums, things like that. Pipe smoking was something I did, but I didn't really think of it as a social activity. And I had gotten involved in a um, pipe smoking forum and, and was very involved with, with that where, you know, we would communicate by written word. I'd never considered YouTube to be a source of pipe smoking information because YouTube was, you know, that was where kids posted videos of them skateboarding or whatever. I had no concept that this sort of thing existed. And I was involved in a post on, uh, it was the Brother of Briar's forum actually. Uh, it, was, it was a discussion on uh, softy bits and you know, alternatives to softy bits, and I, I of course was reading it because I hate softy bits, and I was going to post something snide about that. But I, uh, as I was reading through the, you know, scrolling through all the posts, someone had said, uh, "Here's an alternative," and they had a link, a YouTube link, and I thought, "Well, what's this?" And I clicked on it, and it just happened to be a video of um, Tom N.W. Pipe Smoker. Um, sitting in his in his little uh, back porch area smoking one of those stubby pipes that he loves and uh, he was talking about how he you put shrink tubing or something over the the stem I don't quite remember it and how he would gnaw in the stem like a dog toy he, he kept saying like a dog toy I remember that and I was thinking well this is odd why why did this guy take the time to to do this to <laughs> to make this video. This is this is strange. Remember, I have no concept of YouTube pipe community. And then I look along the sidebar where you get the suggestions. And there's a picture of this this guy, a guy who I would eventually come to know as, as Matches 860, or John. And John's sitting there holding a pipe rack, if I recall the picture correctly. And I thought, well, what the heck is this? And I, I, I click on it, and suddenly I'm sitting there watching this man in his basement. I think he was wearing a plaid uh, shirt. It, it was it was cold. He looked cold. <laughs> uh, it was in the winter, and he was he was taking us through his pipe collection. And this was just one rack of pipes that he wanted to talk about. This was apparently part of a series. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, what the heck am I watching? <laughs> you know, this is a guy in his basement talking about his pipes. And to me at the moment, it was it was the oddest thing I had ever seen. But that video ended and then I watched another and I watched another. And by the end of that night, I had probably watched 20, 25 matches videos. And I was hooked, you know, I, I wanted to be part of this thing. Um, 
I watched a lot of videos and, uh, you know, not just John's. I started to get a sense of the community and, and joined in. And back in those days, so the interesting thing about the YouTube pipe community is that you can, you can make it what you want. You know, there's enough out there that you can sort of almost like in cafeteria fashion say, I'm going to watch these guys and these guys. And, and that's not mean to the other guys. It's just you only have limited time, you know. So when I started out, my YouTube universe was, was really very small. Uh, there was John. There was Danny Shore. Uh, there was Grandpa Cavendish and probably a handful of others that I'm forgetting. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it, it, any time you start to list people, you always forget someone. Uh, then there were guys like N.W. Pipe Smoker and uh, Holy Smoke and Pipe Padre, who were out there and made interesting content, and, and I enjoyed watching them. But the difference was they, they were sort of aloof. They, they weren't really part of... I, I don't mean to say that. They were part of the community, but they weren't interacting in the same way that other folks were. They would just sort of put out their content, and it was always good. But they didn't really, you know, get involved in, you know, shouting out other people or contests or any of that sort of stuff that was going on. And then there was the group of people that kind of started at the same time as me, and or roughly the same time as me. And I'm not going to really point too many of them out, but there's not many of them left. Um, I'll just forget, guys. That's why I don't want to start pointing them out. Um, and that was that was YouTube to me. And of course, uh, you know, Danny's gone, and now John is gone. Uh, Grandpa Cavendish shows up every once in a while. But, uh, you know, a lot of the guys that I that I looked up to aren't there anymore. You know, and it's almost like we've lost an anchor, in a sense, in John. You know, his Friday night videos were... Well, not... You know, for most of the time that I watched John, it wasn't his Friday live streams. It was his Friday, uh, I'm going to take you somewhere, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to tell you a story videos. I looked forward to this. And to be honest with you, I sort of felt like the live streams had taken him away from that. He, uh, he, I know why he did the live streams. I, he's, he talked about it, and I understand it, and I, I appreciate it. But one thing I had hoped is when he did retire, he'd get back to the, to the format that really made him who he was. And I think he wanted to. But sadly, we won't see that. So that's how I first experience John, that, that night of sort of disbelief that ultimately led to, uh, man, I can't wait to be a part of this. And in time I did uh, come forward and make a video, and John commented on my videos almost immediately, and that, that was that was pretty cool, you know, because that was, uh, he was one of the few people that I watched regularly, and to have him comment was almost like, you know, having a star be interested in you. We interacted a fair amount through comments and traded a few emails now and then. Uh, we sort of bonded over over Waybridge, a Four Noggins product that I had uh, I had introduced to him and, and he really liked and dubbed it Haunted Bookshop Light and uh, you know we traded several comments over that. When I um, originally went public with my cancer diagnosis, John was the first person to email me. And, uh, you know, his email was simple and just, I'm sorry to hear you're going through that. If there's anything I can do, let me know. And, you know, people always say that, but when John said it, he meant it. He really meant it. And that, that email meant the world to me, as did many others, but John, John was the first. So, you know, we shared a, a lot of similar interest in tobacco. We both loved Burley. We had very similar palates, and often I'd talk about a blend and he'd try it, and, or he'd talk about a blend and I'd try it, and we'd go back and forth on that.
He was a huge supporter of my my uh, pipe repair efforts. Um, always recommending people uh, get in touch with me for for repairs, uh, and I always appreciated that support. Uh, I was able to work on a few pipes for him, and uh, was was proud to do that work. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to miss him terribly, as I know many of you are. But we need to think about what it is that John would want us to be doing. You know, we say that, but, but I really want to think about that. You know, he, he didn't... He wasn't the kind of person that would probably let sentimentality get in the way. And, you know, he, he understood that this community has to survive. It has to be bigger than any one person. And he'd want us to, to make sure that the community survives and, and thrives and grows and is fostered. And I think we have to do that. We have to, we have to actively try to fill the gap that's going to be left with John's departing. And one of the things that I think John is best known for that we all could make an effort to try to do a little bit more of is uh, storytelling. You know, John was an excellent storyteller, and we all loved hearing his stories. And sometimes we we could just try to work that in a little bit more. Tell a story. Not every day, not every video, but let's just try to fill that gap by telling a little bit about ourselves, sharing our own stories the way John shared his. I think that would be a fine tribute to the man. <clears throat> I also think that, that uh, you know, he really did develop a fondness for the live stream, and maybe that's something that is going to be missed. And, you know, I've thought about it myself. I've thought about I, I'm, I've, I'm already doing a monthly live stream and thinking maybe maybe I'll turn my weekend chat into a live stream. It would give me more time to do shop videos, which I think is what people really enjoy. But it would also give me a chance to help fill in what's, what's missing. Uh, not replace. The, the, that's not possible. So maybe I'll start doing a weekly live stream, and maybe I'll try to, to start doing a bit more storytelling. And I challenge you all to, to join me in that. Uh, tell your story. Uh, John would like that. But I do think we need to be careful of one thing. That hour, 7 Eastern, on Fridays, that belongs to John, and it should remain his. I won't watch anything at that time on YouTube. Uh, I just can't. And I hope that you all will join me in keeping that time, that block of time sacred um, in his memory. Let's just turn off YouTube at 7 o'clock on Fridays. Turn it back on at 8 o'clock, but from 7 to 8, that's John's time. And let's keep it that way. Well, I think I've said everything that I can. I'm going to continue to drink this. And try to get this edited and posted. I hope you all realize that what I'm really trying to say in all of this is that I miss him, and I'm going to keep on missing him. And it's up to us to do him proud. Thank you for watching, folks. Goodbye now.